On April 4th, my best friend Sarah got hit by a bus. We were supposed to meet up to go to the movies, but I was running late. The doctor said she was dead upon arrival at the hospital. I was overcome with sadness, anger, and guilt simultaneously. I didn't know how to feel. In my sudden burst of emotion, I threw my alarm clock at the wall, smashing it to pieces. It was difficult, but I moved on eventually. Of course, memories of her still remain, so there were a few bursts of sadness along the way, but I managed to live my life. It took several months for me to be able to even talk about it to other people, because deep down I kind of felt responsible. I know it's silly considering she was hit by a bus, but I was supposed to meet her. The fact that she crossed the street most likely means that she was worried about me and was going to use the payphone to call me. If it hadn't been for my slackery, she might still be alive. It's thoughts like this that made me cry myself to sleep during the last few months after the incident. By August, I was starting to get a little better. I focused on my job, met a wonderful girl, and even started drawing again. It all seemed to go swimmingly until one day I received a card in the mail. It was a typical birthday card, but what struck me as odd was how bent it was. The edge seemed to have rotted away or been torn by something, most likely due to bad caretaking. I opened the card and was immediately greeted by a Starbucks gift card. It had already expired and seemed to have undergone some damage as well. I read the card, sometimes... Sometimes I wish I hadn't. Hey dude, happy birthday. I thought I'd surprise you by sending it in the mail. Best friends forever, Sarah. These words, which I made sure to read again to be certain I wasn't hallucinating, sent a chill down my spine, followed by sadness resurfacing, forcing me to cry. I didn't break down or anything, it was just unexpected. I remember Sarah telling me she was going to send me a gift in the mail. The postal service must have screwed up the dates. I put the card down and went back to doing my homework, thinking little to nothing of it. The next day I got another card with a similar message, except this time it had no gift inside. I started thinking that perhaps someone was playing a trick on me, or maybe she accidentally sent two messages. It made me a bit nervous, but I chose not to put too much thought into it. Next day I didn't get a card, so I was relieved, but investigating the second card better, there was a small signature on it. The first card was from Sarah, no doubt about it, but the second one had a different signature. It read... Death. Just death. In a really neat, cursive penmanship. Now I was really suspecting that someone was just messing with me. I tried calling the police, but they were no help. So I tried to lay low and hope this mischief would stop on its own. The next day I got another card. Same one as before. Just a message from Sarah and Death's signature. I was getting furious and started punching my wall. Who would do such a thing? Who would exploit the death of my best friend for a cheap laugh? It was then that my phone rang. Having been lost in thought, it startled me. I answered it only to be shocked once more. Hey dude, it's Sarah. You wanna hang out later? In a crowd of thousands of people, I'd be able to pick up Sarah's voice, and this, this was definitely her voice. This phone call wasn't supposed to be here. She was dead. People saw her die. I went to her funeral for God's sake. I stood there, staring blankly at the wall for a good few minutes before I snapped out of it and realized I was still holding my phone. H hello I answered, my lips trembling with sadness. Yeah, I'm just calling to say that I love you. You're the best friend anyone could wish for. I couldn't help myself. The cards were one thing, but this... This was an entirely different story. I cried. I couldn't stop myself from dropping to the ground and bursting into hysterical crying. Sarah! Is that you? Sarah! You're the best friend anyone could wish for. 
I realized that something was off. Of course this wasn't Sarah. It had to be some kind of recording. I wasn't sure something like this was possible for an amateur prankster to do, but it relieved me a bit. Okay, whoever is doing this, stop it. For the love of God, leave me alone. I yelled into the phone, this time raising my voice. I was beginning to hate this person who was messing with my mind like this. Best friends, don't let their friends die. It... it wasn't my fault! I was beginning to lose track of what was real. That line, it was like it was directed at me, and I, I didn't know what to do. Sure, I could have just turned the phone off, but that didn't occur to me at the time. You should have arrived on time. I'm sorry! Sorry isn't going to bring me back. Snapping out of my belief that anything was real, I yelled once more. Seriously, you sick, demented bastard. I swear to God, if I find whoever's doing this, I'm going to kill you! You've already killed me. Sarah's voice retorted and repeated every few seconds. I became scared. I turned off the phone and threw it into the distant corner. Huddled into the corner, I began to cry, holding my head. I didn't know why this was happening or who was sick enough to pull this on me. Then something happened that smashed all remote ideas that this event was grounded in reality. You've already killed me. I screamed when I heard this. I was certain I had turned the phone off, and this time it sounded like the person was talking to me in the same room. The voice repeated itself over and over again. All I could do was scream. It's... it's still going. There's only one way out. I'm so sorry, Sarah. <laughs>